Hi, I want to take a little bit of time uh, to address the question that I gave you last week. And that is, last week I asked you guys to reverse engineer that sample paper in order to figure out the organization or the patterns uh, that are embedded in the project. And the reason I did that is because this project is an inquiry-based research project, meaning that it's organized much differently than, let's say, a generic project where you're starting with a thesis and then working from there. And so what I've done is I've created this map of sorts. And if we take a look, you can see that I've highlighted the, the major moves in the paper. And so it starts with an intro paragraph. But note that the intro paragraph here does not contain the thesis. In fact, the thesis for the project is at the very end. And so if we look at this sample paper and we scroll to the end, you'll see that the conclusion paragraph isn't necessarily a conclusion uh, in the sense that we're restating main ideas. The conclusion paragraph is the thesis. And what I mean by that is that this paragraph here contains all of the claims that we've come to throughout the paper. So it's a series of the major claims in the paper. Uh, and so it's at only at the end of the paper that we get a sense of what the overall argument is. Because, as I've stated in the prompt, the paper really is an explanation of how you arrive at ideas. So you're not starting with them, you're arriving with them. So the question, of course, becomes what then happens in the intro? And if we come up here, we can see that in the intro, there is a simple claim. Uh, but with so much entertainment right at your fingertips, it's easy to overindulge. And so the student is starting to build a case, but note that uh, the student only provides one claim here, and that this paragraph is rather informal, in that the student is providing evidence for that claim, but that evidence is coming from examples with which the student is familiar. There's no research or anything that's happening. And so this first paragraph is really just this foundational paragraph to get the ideas started. And then, as we move forward, it becomes more formal. And so, first, we move forward by asking questions. And so if we look at the map, you can see that I, I've laid out how that works. We've got a question, and then the question informs the research. And so if we come back here, we can see how as we move into this second paragraph, the student is presenting these questions, and then the student brings in outside research that addresses the questions that have been posed. And so the process is that you're going out and looking for the claims that are in the research. I'm not interested necessarily in your opinions here. I'm interested in what you're learning from doing the research. And so the research claim comes in, the student provides an overview of the article, and then the student explains exactly how that article addresses or answers the question that was asked. And so that now is, is part of this pattern that we're looking for. Now, must you overtly ask a question? You can, but you do not have to. Some students decide to use headings, and so the headings kind of serve as the question, right? They show how um, they want to address a certain thing, theme, like uh, socioeconomic impact or something like that, and then we can get uh, a sense of how the paper is laid out. So I'm not forcing you to ask questions uh, in the paper, but I am forcing you to pose questions and then go out and see what the research suggests. And so this pattern of question and research, question and research, happens throughout the paper. And in a sense, what we're doing is collecting claims. You can see that I've highlighted the claims here. Uh, and then at the end, we take all of those claims and we put them together in that final paragraph. Now, I want to make one more uh, point. You'll note that in this map here, uh, I have question and then research, question, research, and occasionally I have this application move. Uh, and I see a distinction between what happens early in the paper and sometimes where we go, because often when you guys begin this project, you actually are using your artifact as a key search term. So for example, you're typing in, passport, history of, passport, impact of, into the database that you're using. And so the artifact, the passport, becomes part of the search. Uh, and so in that case, the research that you're finding is already, quote unquote, applying to the artifact because you're finding information on the artifact. So you're bringing in that research and then you're specifying how it answers the question. 
At other times, however, often as we start moving forward in the project, we actually tend to move away from the artifact itself and we start researching concepts or ideas that can be connected to the artifact. So for example, let's imagine that we were writing a paper on a social media site and maybe some of our research has to do uh, uh, with this idea of the culture of distraction. And so if we were researching the culture of distraction, we may not necessarily find research that's going to name the specific social media site. But we could take the research that we're finding, take those claims, and then it becomes up to us to do the application, to apply that research to the specific social media site. And so if you look in this paper here, you'll see that in the paper, there's a discussion that has to do with uh, autonomy and agency. And that discussion, that research never mentions Netflix, but the student builds the connection. The student does the application. And so throughout your paper, uh, you're, you're bringing in this research. Sometimes the research connects directly to the artifact, and sometimes it's you that's doing the connection. And so I wanted to make sure that I gave you a good sense of how this paper is organized, uh, because this is really important. As I'm reading it, I'm looking for how you arrive at the thesis, how you arrive at the ideas. And that comes as a result of the questions that you ask. All right, Jonah, I'll be there in a sec. Thanks much. I hope this helps.